number 17 is now called to order. This is September 4th, 2018. It is 5.30 p.m. and we are in the Thomas J. Smith Council Chambers. Would you all please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Kathleen, let's have a roll call, please. Grant Murray. Here. McCampbell. Here. Rinker. Here. Wilson. Here. Phillips. Here. All right. We have a proclamation. May I protest? Yes, I have a proclamation. Whereas public libraries play an essential role in the education and development of children, and whereas public libraries throughout this nation serve learners of all ages by providing a full range of information and services, from early literacy classes to homework help, and by offering free access to resources, space, and knowledgeable staff to support the success of all members of our community. And whereas public libraries bridge the digital divide by making digital technology, information, and assistance equally accessible to all. And whereas the Burlington Public Library is committed to lifelong education, early literacy, and student support, technology access, and digital literacy, and community engagement and customer service. And whereas the Burlington Public Library creates opportunities for all people to connect with others, learn about the world around them, and imagine the futures before them. And whereas a free library card is the smartest card you can own, and an important school supply. And now therefore, we, the City Council of the City of Burlington, Iowa, do hereby proclaim September as Library Card Sign-Up Month Woo. in Burlington and encourage all residents to sign up for a library card at your library. Signed and sealed this fourth day of September 2018, Shane A. McCampbell, Mayor. And we have Rhonda. Thank you for this annual proclamation. Um, Library Card Sign-Up Month has been nationally recognized since 1987. And the idea behind it is that at this time of year when we have students of all ages going back to classes, it's a good time to remind everyone that there are a lot of tools and services available through the library to support individuals and families in our community. Um, there's actually a lot of things you can do at the library without a library card. Um, so even if you don't have a library card, there are things you can do. Some of you might have um, come to the library last week for the meeting that the development office had in the meeting rooms. We get a lot of people come in for meetings there or using the smaller rooms for individual or small group needs. But people also can come use the library for the programs and events that we have. Um, I gave you a copy of our uh, calendar events there um, before the meeting. So, you know, the, later this month, there's the Friends of the Library book sale. Um, our annual, or excuse me, our weekly um, classes for children um, begin again next week. So things like that are all available without having a library card. There's other things like get, renewing your driver's license at our DOT kiosk that we have, or for just a few more days, you can come down and look at trash carts in our lobby. So there's a lot of different things you can do without a card. But once you get a library card, it's like unlocking a new, a new level of opportunity at the library. So I always encourage people to come in and take that next step. It's very simple if you're a Burlington resident, you just need to bring in an ID with your address on it, so like a driver's license. Fill out a very short form and we'll get you a card. And that card then opens up for you access to over 190,000 items, both physical items you can come in the library and check out, or things that you can access from home through our website and download, like ebooks. There's also a lot of things you can do on our website with a library card that you have to have the library card number to put in to get to. So having that card is helpful to get one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions we offer every evening through a service. Um, we also have streaming music. We have, you can, you can do practice ACT tests, all kinds of different things that you can access through the website with your library card. But there's more. Um, you also can access things throughout the country. So if we don't have an item, we will go and look at other libraries that do. 
So through the interlibrary loan service, you don't just have access to our library, you have access to libraries all around the country by having that library card. So there's um, a lot of good reasons right there to get a library card, but for September, we do have some extra incentives that we offer for library card sign up month. So if you don't have a library card and you come and get one this month, there is a little gift that you will get. Um, it's actually a coupon for curly fries at Arby's, so right there, um, a good reason to come in and, and get a library card. But also, we will enter you into a prize for a drawing um, at the end of the month for some gift certificates. And if you already have a library card and you've lost it or you've just worn it out from use, you can get a replacement card um, with no charge this month. And you'll notice in the things that I gave you there, there's a thing called um, our perks for this month. We have reached out to some of our neighbors and um, there are some downtown businesses that if you show your library card in September or October, we'll give you some deals. And that is still developing, so watch our Facebook page as more um, get their information turned into us. We'll be putting more deals up on our Facebook page. So lots of different good reasons to get a library card in September, but as I think I say every year, any time's a good time to get a library card. So just come down and see us and we're happy to help you get started. I so. just want to clarify, so if you have a library card and it's kind of beat up, and yes. you want to get a new one, you get yes. one for free and yes. you get a, get a free gift, is that correct? That's right. Okay, what about, um, this isn't me, okay. but I just, want to, I just want to get this out. What about somebody that has a library card, they've had it for a while, but they have a fine mm -hmm. and they can't pay all the fine, but they still want to keep, continue a relationship with the library. What would you say to that? I'm really glad you asked that question because something we started in the last year or two is we now have what we call our payment plan. Um, so it used to be that after a certain point, if your fee was higher than $5, you couldn't check anything out <clears throat> until you paid off everything. And some people have fees that are are bigger, um, you know, that it would take a little while to do that. So now what we do is we have a, a system where if you come in and talk to us, we'll take a look at it with you, um, and if you pay 10% of what you owe, then you can still ch start checking out again. You just pay a little bit every time you come in. So you wanna try to make it easier for people who might have developed a, a bigger fine because they lost a book or got eaten by the dog, whatever it might be, um, we want people to be able to come in and not be afraid to come back and see us at the library. So stop in and see someone at the desk. Any staff member there can help um, take a look at, at where you're at with your account and get you started using the library again. Okay. Any other questions? No, I, will, I will say the kiosk for the driver's license, beautiful 10 minutes out. Oh, that's a, that's, a, that's a best kept secret. <laughs> if, yeah, we know it's, it's not used as much as it could be. Mm -hmm. um, we do, we do get a lot of use of it, but I think a lot of people don't realize it's there, so I'm glad it went well for you. Honor, what I really enjoy is the, the meeting space. So they've got large meeting space, there's medium-sized meeting space, there's tiny rooms to study in. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's one of the things that I really enjoy because I'm part of the Rotary Club. We, our board meetings are held out there. I've been to a lot of the different forums. I know I, when I worked with JA, some of the larger competitions where we'd have yeah. 60 to 80 people there uh, can meet. Um, and then I've conducted interviews out there just two or three people in a room. So that's a really good service, and I really appreciate that. Well, thank you. Yeah, we. Uh, one of the things that I've enjoyed seeing is the different ways that people use those rooms. And we do have several businesses that use them for interviews. We And Junior Achievement comes back every November and, and does their event there. So it's nice to see all those different folks come through the library. Yep. That's good. Very good. Yep. Thank, yep. Thank you. Thank Thanks you very much. much. Thanks, Rhonda. Thanks for everything you're doing. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is the consent agenda. All matters listed under item one consent agenda having been discussed or considered to be routine by the city council will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If a discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. Uh, tonight we have the usual finances and miscellaneous, minutes of previous meetings, payroll and city claims, beer, liquor, wine and cigarettes, reports and bonds. We have uh, resolutions. The first is a resolution approving nuisance abatements for various properties. The second is a resolution approving final acceptance and release of retention monies for the site improvement work on the new police department building. The third is a resolution approving final acceptance and release of retention monies for the general construction on the new police department building. The fourth is a resolution approving final acceptance, final payment, and release of retention monies for the electric work on the new police department building. The fifth is a resolution granting permission to sign off on correspondence and forms required for the Iowa Economic Development Authority for the Locust Basin Sewer Project. 
The sixth is a resolution adopting public notice affirmative fair housing policy. The seventh is a resolution approving a memorandum of understanding between the City of Burlington, Iowa and the City of West Burlington, Iowa for the construction of the Agency Street Rise Project. The eighth is a resolution approving a memorandum of understanding between the City of Burlington, Iowa and the City of West Burlington, Iowa for the construction of Mount Pleasant Street Overlay Project. The ninth is a resolution approving memorandum of understanding between the City of Burlington, Iowa and the City of West Burlington, Iowa for the construction of an HMA overlay on Agency Street between Gear Avenue and West Burlington Avenue. The tenth is a resolution accepting the Heritage Hill Historic Dist District Guidelines. <clears throat> The 11th is a resolution approving a professional services agreement with H.R. Green, Inc. of Cedar Rapids, Iowa for general consulting services for the Burlington, Iowa Wastewater Treatment Facility for the period of July 1st, 2018 to June 30th, 2019. Uh, the 12th resolution is a resolution approving help to others program H2O through American Water Resources. Uh, number 13 is a resolution approving the street sign disposal policy. And the 14th is a resolution approving an agreement with Stanley Consultants for investigation of the Hawkeye sewer collapse. We also have a set date for a public hearing for September 17th for consideration of an ordinance amending section 100.62.D, determination of a stormwater utility fee, right of way of chapter 100 stormwater management and drainage systems utility of the city of Burlington Municipal Code. And we also have one appointment, Mayor Pro Tem. Yes, we have um, an appointment for the Animal Hearing Board. Um, for Paul Carl to fill an expired term, which expires um, today, or which will expire <laughs> September 4th, 2021. Excuse me. All right. So thank you for that. No doubt. Thank you, Paul. Is there anybody from the audience that would like to have any of these items removed from the consent? I see none. Council? Thanks. Good. Can I get a motion? Your Honor, I have a motion to approve all items listed under one item one consent agenda. Second. Moved and second. Kathleen, let's vote. Graham Murray. Aye. McCampbell. Aye. <coughs> Rinker. Aye. Wilson. Aye. Phillips. Aye. Okay. This is time set for hearing for consideration of an ordinance amending certain sections of Chapter 105, Garbage and Solid Waste, and Chapter 106, Collection of Solid Waste of the City of Burlington Municipal Code. Publication has been made in the Hawkeye as prescribed by law. Mr. Fitty. Okay. Um, we're here to talk about the uh, changes, proposed changes, amending the uh, ordinance uh, to move from customer-owned 33-gallon cans and allow the use of 33-gallon uh, bags, and we're changing that to a city-owned container program. And um, the intent is to um, put out in the community 35-gallon carts, 65-gallon carts, 95-gallon carts based on the customer's choice of which cart they prefer to use. Uh -huh. And um, to, uh, uh, this was intended to address uh, both uh, physical issues that with the department, the labor force, as well as to try to reduce the number of nuisances within the community. Um, you have before you the uh, ordinance, the proposed amended ordinance. Um, if you go through the ordinance, you'll see basically the lion's share of the changes pertain to language indicating that we are using city-owned containers in lieu of customer-owned containers. And uh, other than that, the program pretty much re re retains the same format that we've had throughout the years, uh, who the customers are, uh, who are the eligible customers are, which includes uh, single homes, uh, duplexes, threeplexes, and fourplexes. Uh, I've been involved with the solid waste program since about 93, 94, and it's always been that way since I've been here. Um, so um, the language changes the lion's share is for the change to the uh, city-owned containers and uh, how they're to be used. Uh, we're also requiring the use of a container for the garbage set out. Uh, if you have additional trash, you have uh, 
Uh, you can use a bag, a 33-gallon bag, uh, but you have to attach a trash tag. Uh, the council, in an earlier resolution, adopted the fees for the various size carts, as well as increased the fee for the trash tag from $2 currently to $4, um, or at least that's what the retailers are anticipated to sell those tags for. And um, I think the, uh, the uh, tiered program that was established by resolution uh, recognizes that if you're going to use one uh, trash tag per month, you would actually end up spending more money on that, lo the lowest, smallest container, the 35 gallon container base fee of $14.25 plus the $4, that actually adds up to be more than what you would spend if you simply went to the 65 gallon cart. Um, don't know that we should go through the ordinance itself step by step right now since we're gonna be looking at the ordinance. Um, other than that, I really don't know what else to say. Well, let me have you stay close by. Sure. Um, uh, let's 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 go to the audience. Is there anybody here that has any questions or concerns? Yes, ma'am. Hello, my name is Terry Ariano. I am the president of Southeast Iowa Property Owners Association. We have about 80 members representing 2,000 rental properties. And I'd like to thank Don for uh, meeting with us last week to go over a couple of items we were unclear about with a few of our members. And we're here tonight to voice a couple of concerns. And the concerns are in particular for two, three, and fourplex units that fall out of the scope of um, an individual property and are not qualified to be on a multi-unit. Um, so I do have a few other members here that have specifics they would like to bring up to be able to share with the board. So I thank you for listening to our concerns. Thank you, Terry. Hi, I'm Chuck Siekman, and what I would like to address would be what is really uh, an inequity as far as uh, a relationship of how properties are taxed, uh, multi-residential, and the uh, classification they're in as far as trash pickup. Uh, specifically, I'm talking about three and four, fourplex units. Uh, they are on a three or fourplex unit you're paying 23% more property tax. The city's collecting 23% more property tax than a duplex uh, at the same rate. The rollback is different. Uh, it's classified by the state. Uh, and my request would be that uh, a three and fourplex unit be classed as multi-residential, the same as is classed for property tax collection. Uh, it's the only honest way to approach it. You know, don't tax one way and then change the game when there are other things that relate to multi-unit properties. So the change I would request would be that three and four unit properties have the option of opting out of the trash pickup program and contracting separately for that. In my case, for the past 16 years, I have a fourplex. For the past 16 years, I have not used city trash pickup, but I've paid for it, and I've contracted separately. And the reason being, um, we did a trash room adjacent to the driveway, concrete room, into the driveway wall, and my tenants have unlimited trash. They're not limited to the 33. They have unlimited trash pickup weekly. And I have paid the city over $10,000 in the last 16 years for trash pickup that I haven't used. But I've paid the extra property tax, the 23% top property tax on the property. So the city has collected the high property tax, and that's the way it is. But 
I haven't been able to opt out of the trash pickup program. So it's, it's a bit of a double taxation. Uh, need to, you know, from an honesty standpoint, just really need to reclassify, put it in the same category that we're paying taxes on, on the three and four unit. And should the property owner wish to opt out of that, uh, they would have that option. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Jeff. Dennis Wilson, 1700 River Street. I sent you an email uh, about a week ago. Is Rob still here? But I have to say, before I get into this, that there's no better, I'm a heavy user at the library, and there's no better customer service in this city than the library. But I have one major complaint. I keep telling her every time I see her, she needs to track the books that I read because I forget and then I reread them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Are you working on that, Ryan? <laughs> okay, you probably uh, remember receiving this but didn't pay much attention with all the other stuff that I'm sure you're getting. My, my position is asking that the ordinance be changed to just drop multifamily units completely. It currently says, and multifamily dwellings with no, with up to and including four separate dwelling units that are not part of a larger complex. And I'm suggesting just drop that. Make any multifamily unit the choice of the property owner to use uh, private service. Um, it, it, it goes on to say the owner of a multi dwelling container or containing more than four uh, units can choose to contract with the city. And I would certainly see that still as an option, but leave it up to the property owner. If you had a chance and looked at my spreadsheet that I did of my multiplexes that I currently still have, most of mine have been transferred to my son, but I still have a few. If I look at a fourplex, using the minimum 35 gallon and after meeting with Don, and Don thank you for the good input that you gave us, I would certainly not go with the 35 gallon, I would go with the, the 65s, but if I use the 435s, I would be paying 57 a month uh, to the city. If I went to Levine's, which I use on some other uh, multiplexes that I have, I would use 295s at 2250, about a 60 percent difference between the uh, city and uh, Levine's. And Levine's will come pick it up wherever it is, just as Chuck suggested, he has them in a concrete bunker so it doesn't spread garbage everywhere. They'll go get it and take it out to the trunk. I don't have to have one of the tenants or myself go over there and move them to the, to the street, etc. Uh, on a threeplex, uh, it's not quite as much more expensive, but it's still 47 percent more. 42.75 a month versus 22.50 for the 295s with Levine, and then a, a two-plex, uh, it would be 28.50 versus I would only use 195. That would be more than enough for for a duplex. So again, I suggest let's just change the ordinance. I don't know how, who made the decision way back when before the 90s of saying if it's a fourplex or more or a fiveplex or more, then you know, you can use uh, commercial. Why isn't it two-plex or more? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anybody else from the audience? Oh, Council, Tim Scott, 2017 South 15th. Um, I've got a few things about the ordinance. First one, I'm here to talk for uh, several elderly, elderly ladies that uh, cornered me at uh, Perkins Restaurant uh, a couple days ago. Uh, their concern is being required to use the container when all they have is maybe a 13-gallon bag once a week or once every other week. They don't want to have to wheel that cart all the way out and... Um, uh, just to get their trash picked up when they're, for years, all they've been doing is just setting that that bag out. I said I would bring that concern uh, to you and that I felt it was a reasonable concern and uh, that you would uh, 
take a look at that and not make that uh, requirement on them. Uh, concern that I have is first the, the $35 fee to make the uh, exchange if you're not satisfied with the size that you get. I can understand uh, the reasoning behind that and that if someone should want to change a second time then I feel that that's reasonable but it's it's uh, hard to judge by looking at those three cans what you're going to need and I think the majority of the people are going to do like they did in West Burlington and pick that smaller size first and then decide oops that was the wrong size I need the bigger one um, if uh, if you can uh, find it to uh, waive that uh, fee the first time and um, uh, and so that everybody can get sized right. Um, one of my concerns was I went to look at the size of the cans and I couldn't find them. It was on a Sunday afternoon, right after the, I read the article in the paper, and the, the uh, number of people that followed me into the parking lot at the library and made the same motion I did was, I was kind of amazed, there were seven. Um, everybody read that article and wanted to go see what those uh, cans looked like right away. I don't know if they come back on a on a day that the library was open and, and looked at it or not. But that was, uh, that's uh, one of my suggestions. One of my concerns is the $4 bag fee. And the reason I'm saying that is even when the bag fee is $2, I still have people filling my trash cans at my commercial establishments with their trash. And because, and, and, there's tags put on these bags by the city saying that you need to dispose of these bags in a proper fashion, pay a fee or whatever it says that they say, but uh, they're showing up in my trash containers. And I can tell you, I've talked with several businesses and they're saying the same thing, that others trash show up in their, their containers and we're paying the fee to have the trash haul off. Now, um, I reported the last three times to the police department so there was a police report. It's been within the last three weeks. And on two of those occasions, there was enough recyclable uh, material in there to pay for a trash tag, which would have taken care of one of the six bags that was, uh, was in there. But um, that, that gets extremely costly, especially when they're uh, mixing the garbage in with um, uh, other material. Uh, such as trees and brush and that sort of stuff, there's a huge difference in the cost. If you put a little bit of trash in with your brush, then it becomes all becomes trash. And, uh, and that, uh, that fee uh, goes up quite a bit. I'd rather encourage people to buy tags or, uh, and keep the fees smaller. Uh, I, not that it's going to change those that, that um, are doing that or practicing that. I think it's going to cost, or you're going to see a lot more of it, and you're going to see more people putting uh, trash in, out in the county uh, with the higher fees. Um, I personally like the, the cans. I, I like the concept, um, and uh, I uh, had uh, promoted that when I was on council and uh, had hoped to see one size can lining the streets all looking the same instead of having 50 different cans a block of so it's not that I'm against that it's just I think it can be improved upon it appreciate it if you'd consider that thank you thanks Tim. thank you Mayor. thanks Tim. anybody else from the audience before we okay hold tight uh, James do you or uh, or mr. Tesla want to uh, address the uh, the deal on the, uh, the fourplex question the two to fourplex question um, on what that it's been that way for an awful long time. I don't know if you know the origins of that, Don, but uh, we're certainly charged the recycling fee there for the up through the fourplexes. Um, they're treated the up through the fourplexes are treated differently from through Des Moines County solid waste um, for the, the way the recycling program is done. And I don't know why that was originally put in place. Um, one of the issues that we've talked about. Don has looked at how many of our units qualify as uh, fourplexes or threeplexes, about 15% of our units overall. Uh, duplexes is another 5%. And if you counted uh, condos uh, or 
along with that, uh, you would end up, I don't know what the percentage, how many of those there are too, but we, we've got a quarter of our community fits into that category that you could be potentially carving out of uh, the program. And you've built a system that uh, will, well, it won't function the same. And uh, you're gonna have, you're, you'll have dr trouble, difficulty making it work. And I think that your crew will have trouble with some of the concepts in terms of trying to keep track of which duplex is part of our system and which isn't. The, um, of course, the trash fee is uh, covers recycling the trash. It also carries, covers the leaf collection program in the spring and the fall. Um, you know, the current citywide cleanup program, um, as well as people taking wood waste to the landfill. Of course, they have to show that they're a trash paying customer. But for the guys who work the streets and the alleys picking up the trash, providing the leaf collection program for the recycling program, um, you know, will people set material out for us to collect? It is being covered by the solid waste fund the personnel, the equipment that's being used. Um, somewhat unlike some of the adjoining communities which rely on their street departments to provide the leaf collection program, um, some of the uh, citywide cleanup programs I believe are uh, carried out by uh, the street department in those programs. Um, so the fee covers a multifaceted number of programs and uh, if this one's in and this one's out and this one's in and that one's out, it would be very difficult, I believe, for the crews to uh, carry out the program in an effective and efficient manner. Um, if you were to opt them all out, I think probably uh, the uh, crews would know the difference between a single family home and a fourplex or a threeplex, although there are some very large homes here in the city which are subdivided and they are three two duplexes three plexes four plexes I think it would be uh, it would be very difficult for the uh, personnel to carry out the programs what if we looked at just opting out four plexes and the reason I bring that up <clears throat> is because duplexes and three plexes there's a mix of uh, landlord owned or property owned, rental property owned dwellings as well as individually owned dwellings within those structures, which I understand would be extremely difficult for us to manage. But typically in, in fourplexes are not buildings that are owned by individual um, persons. So would it be, would it make more sense if we looked at any of it to just exclude the fourplexes? What type of impact would that have? And do you see that as still being a difficult thing for trash crews to manage uh, when they're out collecting trash? So instead of the ordinance reading four or more, or I'm sorry, more than four, it would read four or more. Did I lose you? No, <laughs> uh, I, I'm just, I don't work the curbs and the the streets and the alleys, uh, how easy or difficult that would be. I mean, I can picture in my mind fourplexes that I've seen out there uh, when I've been out and about, but I certainly don't go in all areas of the community, so I, I'm not sure. I think there's some large homes that are fourplexes. Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, I have down in my, my, my uh, count is that there's uh, 152 fourplexes, approximately 152 fourplexes that are currently served by the city's program. So that represents 608, approximately 608 dwelling units out of 96, 90, 9600, 9700 dwelling units. I just, okay, I just want to get clarified where I'm at. First off, the, the way we did set it up, it is going to be hard to make this work any other way unless we have uh, all in um, the city. You know, maybe people have a problem with that, but we make decisions like that all the time, that we make city decisions that for everybody. So I, I understand where people want to opt out. My thought is, is uh, I don't want to make a bunch of changes at the last minute before we even tried this program out. We were doing a bunch of tweaking right off the bat to try to taper this to get it 
uh, to, to make this an optimal program. I, I realize and I know that looking at it right now that this isn't going to this isn't going to run optimally. This is going to be at the best way that we can possibly run this, and there may be some tweaking after the fact. But I think we need to get into the program to see what really needs to be what really needs to be tweaked, or to see where we're at on this. Even with the the one thing I the one thing I do want to say this just so you guys the one thing I did hear tonight was the uh, the first thirty thirty five dollar fee. I. I heard that. That's uh, that's about the only thing I saw. Everything else, um, I think we just need to get into this program and get our feet wet and uh, and see what what we need to do. If you know, if anything, to uh, to make an adjustment to this. But if we start, if people just start opting out, you know, left and right, we can't do this at all. Where there's just no way we'll be able to do it. It's going to come back and it's going to hurt us in the long run. So um, I just think we need to we need to consider this going in that. It wasn't a deal where we thought, well, half the people can do it, and the ones that can do it, we can still make this work. This was, which I think everybody was full aware of, that we needed everybody on board. That's part of the reason why, again, we raised the taxes or raised the price on the tag so that we could steer people more toward the bigger, the bigger trash can to make sure that all objectives were met. So, I just, I'm hearing all these ideas, and at the midnight hour, you know, some of them sound good, but I still think we've got a, a decent plan to move forward, and I'd like to see. After after we've implemented this plan, uh, we've got a better. I think we'll have a better idea of what is working, what's not working, and what, what adjustments we can make. That's that's where I'm thinking on that. <clears throat> I was going to say I, I was going to apologize to council. I don't do this very often, and trying to keep the ordinance and the public hearing on the program separate. There's probably things I should have said or or can say about currently what's going on with our, our mailers and our participation rate and our numbers and uh, you know I know about what the recycling what's going on with recycling one of the concerns about the tiered program or not having a tiered program as far as the impact on backsliding on recycling and I have all that kind of information available to me but uh, I didn't prepare properly to keep the two separate so I mean I find us we're talking about the ordinance and uh, when maybe that should have been kept aside and just talked as, as about um, over the overall about the program so I apologize about well I that. think we've already come to the conclusion that within the next couple of months we're going to be sitting down and looking at this ordinance again because we have to talk about it with respect to spring slash fall cleanup things like that um, I think they make a good argument from the fourplex standpoint but I the question that I've got is how are we going to be able to implement it? Is it going to be practical practical to do it um, when they're out there throwing trash? Um, so I, if, there's, if there's not a consensus to, to look at changing it tonight, I think we need to at least get the feedback so that we can discuss it the next time this comes around in the next couple of months. Um, but I'm with you. I don't want to. I think the program holds a lot of merit as it is right now. It's just we need to talk about that fourplex. Well, the, the one thing that I, that I thought we stressed in, in some prior planning is that, the, you know, your trash tag purchases ought to be a pretty good guideline about what size trash can you should have. That's why we set it up that way. If you bought one trash tag a, a month, you go with the 65 gallon, that way you're, you're not going to be, uh, you would actually save money. And that's why we put it together that way. We did try to look at how can we make this a good thing for the citizens and yet clean up our, our uh, our town, so I'm I'm pretty comfortable with the the trash tags and the and the trash tag fee, uh, and even the thirty five dollars switch over uh, on those things. So I'm 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 happy with the ordinances as it, as it, with the changes that are there. One thing I did want to address Tim's comments was um, uh, discussed the availability of people to go and see the trash cans, and I think. We've actually done a pretty good job of trying to make those available. I know sometimes those establishments aren't open all the time. It's at Public Works. It was at Don's office. It's been in the public library. And I know it's been in the media a lot. So I'd like to think that we've taken the steps necessary to make sure that if somebody wants the opportunity to see those cans, um, that they've had that opportunity. Um, the other thing I would say is recycling, to me, is very much an idealistic uh, chore. You either do it or you don't because you believe in what it stands for. Um, most people that I've spoke to that are recyclers don't do it because it saves them space in their trash can. That's an added benefit, but that's not the primary reason. The reason that they're recycling is because they know that it's beneficial for their community and for the environment. 
um, and, it, and it makes makes them feel better about their refuse or um, their solid waste. The other thing that um, I wanted to make sure, and, and I understand the property owner's concerns, but the the fact that we're still billed for the recycling, that fee would still exist. Um, so that if you took a couple of their costs, you're still going to be looking at three dollars and seventy five cents a unit. Is that right? on top of that and then um, the way the plant sits right now there would also still have to be a fee on there for the fall spring cleanup because they wouldn't necessarily have the ability to opt out of that as well so like I said when we roll around and start to talk about this right. we'll have the benefit of a knowing what cans are issued so how many 95 65 and 35 gallon cans are out there so we'll have an idea what that breakdown looks like but I think we should at least look at that fourplex idea at that time I'm open to that. I'm committed to making sure that we uh, try to get this uh, um, where it benefits as many people as possible, knowing that this is a new program. I, you know, I, we, we stress this, and I, I think um, everybody can, can make their points tonight, but I, I think the council is, uh, we're committed to making sure that we try to get this right, but the only way that we can see where we really need to tweak some things is to jump in, and that's what we were trying to do up to this point. But. Um, I just yeah, want to compliment Don. Anytime somebody approached me and they had a question either to deal with recycling or a physical disability issue, boy, he ran out there and he met with the person in person or got staff on it. So I really, kudos to you, Don. I think you really, really uh, did, a, did a good job covering this. So thank you. I'll let, I'll let you come. I'll let you come. Just one more. I put that in the email as well. That the, the second part of my question is why is the city so much higher priced than a private hauler? Does the city have that much more overhead? I don't think so. Why? Why would there be such a, a difference? And even if you pulled out the 375 on my four plus example. That drops the price with the city to 42 as compared to half that with Levine's at 22.50, and I'm sure Floyd's would be the same or thereabouts. So I just I, you know, I really ask the council to consider why why should there be that much difference between some of it? You know, some of it's going to be just because you're talking a smaller group against a larger group. You take you take on a bigger amount of people, the numbers are going to go up. Uh, you know, the so you're that's thinking what Levine's is dealing with more. No, 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 the city should be more economical with more customers. You, you think it works that way? But well, it does work that way. You know and, that. And some no, things it does. It doesn't work that way across the board, and you know okay. that. Okay. I just, I ask you to keep that question in mind. Don? Well, I, I was just going to re respond. Um, we're not doing, we're just not picking up trash. I mean, we're going, picking up dead animals here and there. There's, we're being called off from here. We're picking up the containers for the city and dumping them at the park, the recplex, the police department, the water department. Picking up my big you know, screen TV we're, next we're week. Doing, we're doing those types of things. Uh, we're picking up the appliances. We're picking up the uh, uh, bulky items. Uh, we go, uh, we are doing the leaf program, the bag leaf program in the spring, a little bag leaf program in the fall. Uh, I would think that if you were to ask the solid or the uh, private haulers to do that, there would there would be an increase in what they charge. I believe um, if they were to have an open-ended type uh, uh, account at the landfill for the customer to take wood waste out there from eight-inch diameter, smaller, uh, and it would be charged against their fee that they're collecting from the customers. I think that they probably take some a little bit of insurance and put that in there to help cover that cost of that unknown. Um, I, I just think that there, there are many things that the city department does that the private hauler isn't. Now, I also want to say on the other side of the coin that anybody who's talked to me, and I've, I've fielded several calls from people who do just as Mr. Seekman does, that they pay the base fee to the city and they use a private hauler for their trash services. Some of them would put out a 33-gallon can or bag for the city since they were paying for the services, and others just said, well, it's not worth setting out 33 gallons. I'm just going to deal with the private hauler. And uh, in every single case, I've complimented the, the private haulers because I think they do provide a very good service and a very economical service. 
they don't operate with the same rules that we do in, as far as they don't have trash tags for extra trash. I've seen many commercial containers out there when I've uh, been on the streets and seen where materials piled on top of the cart, against the cart, behind the cart. And I, I just find myself wondering if the private hauler continues to pick all that additional material up at no additional charge. I don't know. But I do think that they provide a very, very good service. And I've always been complimentary of the private haulers. But we also provide a very, very good service for what we charge. And we do do many facets that the private hauler does not provide. And it's not to say that they couldn't, but I think if you're going to look at privatizing, then you need to take all those things into account and have that part of the bid process because there's a lot of things that those guys do that would normally not be performed by someone who's just coming by, emptying your trash container and going on their way. We police the, we police the, uh, the alleys for landscaping issues, for material growing into the right-of-ways, and we write letters and we interact with the public on that matter. I don't think the private haulers do that. Now, whether that's benefited the city or not, I can't say because we deal with the same people many times year after year after year, and I'm sure the nuisance department has the same circumstances that they deal with. But again, we take the time to do those types of things that I don't think the private hauler does. So. Good points. Okay. Council, any other questions? This is just the first reading on this, just to be, just to remind everybody here tonight. So, again, this is, I think, the public hearing, so. Yes, yes. The other thing on the pricing, uh, the pricing that was, that's mentioned by Dennis, I think 11 a quarter plus 375 for the, for the recycling program puts it at about 15 bucks. Um, we could have, we could implement, or if we'd have gone with the 65 gallon containers or the 95 gallon containers uh, with across, one, the across the board yeah. for one standard price, we'd have been 17 and 17 and a quarter was going to raise more money than what we're going to be raising with the three pricing, the tiered pricing. Um, so it's not as much of a difference in price. It's, we're still higher than what the, the smaller, the, the smaller hauler is. I think a couple of council members over time have talked to private haulers about the idea of privatizing. Uh, I, I never have, but I don't know. Those who have talked to the private haulers, have you heard a lot of interest in trying to do it? At they have I was no told interest point blank in, no by two of them. Yeah, they have no yeah, interest in it. It is a different system. system to coordinate and manage a force with, we have seven vehicles in our fleet, six? We have a total of uh, eight. Eight. Uh, you have, uh, it's just a lot more moving parts, and I think that might be part of why uh, along with the duties that go along with it. It's a different system than having a small, than being a small private hauler. Um, it, it's just a different type of dynamic of what you're doing for service. And keep in mind the 65 and 95 gallon cans are slightly inflated because we didn't want to increase the price on the 35 gallon. Yes, so you've, we've so. inflated the price on the larger containers. You purposefully did it when, because you wanted to have a, a, a 35 gallon that you didn't raise the price on. So. Every, every decision that you've made along the way has picked a winner and loser. And you're hearing from a different set that sees a dynamic that this is difficult for them, but you've made it difficult for them because of a decision for wanting to make it easier for someone else. And, and there's, just, there's just no easy way. The more tweaks you do, the harder any system becomes. Well, I think, like I said, once we have the can numbers in hands, when we talk about this in a couple months, we'll be able to know what that math looks like. So far, we are 41 percent, 35 gallon, 41 percent, 65 gallon, and 17 percent, 95 gallon. And that's we've had about 55, 55 percent have responded to the mailers sent out. About 55 percent. So we're a little bit ahead of what they've considered average participation. We still have three days left: Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, I know I haven't fielded a number of calls yet today of people still trying to make up their mind the size of the cart that they want to uh, choose or select. And, you know, we've, we are encouraging people still, even but time is getting short, to get in and look at the display 
at those three locations. So 55% has been returned? 55% yeah. of Spot. the the mailers that have been sent out have replied okay. either so, in the form of a website yeah. or dropping it in the mail. And of the 55%, 41% of those are 35 gallon and what'd you say, 41%? 41% are 65s and 17% are 95s. Now, non-response is, is, is a 65 gallon so car. right now our projected 35 gallon response is gonna be somewhere around 27% give or take right okay so if that's the case then that number is still below where we expected it to be because if I remember correctly that's 35 percent right so over the next three days um, if that maintains we'll be below that 35 percent that we needed to be at in order to break depending reach on the response. threshold for the pricing that we set up correct yeah okay you guys good I'm good Motion. Your Honor, I have a motion to close. Second. Kathleen. Graham Murray. Aye. McCampbell. Aye. Rinker. Aye. Wilson. Aye. Phillips. Aye. Your Honor, I have a motion for preliminary adoption of the first reading of an ordinance amending certain sections of Chapter 105, Garbage and Solid Waste, and Chapter 106, Collection of Solid Waste of the City of Burlington Municipal Code. Second. Moved and second. Kathleen, let's take it to vote. Graham Murray? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Brinker? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Okay. Uh, now it's time for consideration of a facility use agreement with Southeast Soccer Academy, CESA, for use of field at the Burlington Regional Recplex, continued from August 20th, 2018, City Council meeting. Second. Second. No, come on. Second. They screwed me up. Second. Thanks, you want to Mr. give Kisland? us the status? Oh, wait, yeah. We're uh, still under the review getting... Uh, want to get some of the wording correct before we uh, get it to our attorney so we we don't have anything at this point um, some of the comments from the previous uh, work session uh, taking those into account and having that come back through a full work session to have further discussion before it comes back to council um, so we would anticipate at the future work session unless it takes longer to get everything reviewed being a short week this week uh, by Monday so hopefully we can have everything back by Monday and have discussion again sounds good is, yeah, you have that. Your Honor, I have a motion to continue the public hearing to September 17th, 2018, City Council meeting. Second. 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 Kathleen, let's vote. Graham Murray? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Rinker? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Okay, ordinances. Your Honor, I have a motion for preliminary adoption of the second reading of an ordinance amending the ordinance number 3129 being an ordinance creating the, the Dewald Plaza or Plaza, PUD, or planned unit development by making changes to section 3.B land use design criteria and section 5 50 foot buffer park. Second. Mr. Teslin. No changes from the previous reading. Um, this. Uh, Ordinance would amend the existing PUD um, for lot seven of Stone Date Crossing, which is at the southeast corner of the uh, PUD on Mason Road, to allow for uh, residential, including multifamily residential, on that lot, um, as well as a required buffer park, uh, landscape buffer park between lot six and seven, so between lot seven and then the lot to the west of that. Concerns from the audience? Hello. Hello, Mary Baird, Southeast Air Regional Airport, uh, Airport Director, and I'm just here tonight to reiterate uh, the airport's authority's concerns regarding this being a multi-family use, a thousand feet from the end of the runway. Um, as I outlined in the letter to you, nothing has changed. Still very concerned about our grant assurances from the Federal Aviation Administration. Um, there, there are two grant assurances that say we will take care of the property around the airport via zoning ordinances. So um, just wanted to reiterate that the airport is still very concerned about changing this ordinance or changing this PUD to multifamily use. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Any other comments or concerns from the audience? Uh, Mark Fisher, uh, I work with Myers Construction, 24 Cascade Terrace in Burlington. Um, and I'm just here as a representative of the developer um, in case you had some questions. We're just beginning the process, um, design development and um, making the FAA application, um, meeting all the height restrictions and things like that. So we're just getting into that process, haven't got any final plans yet. Um, but if there are some questions or concerns you have, uh, I, I'm here to listen and hopefully answer some. Okay. Thank you. Just making sure no questions or concerns from the audience? I see none. Council. You know, as, you know, as I stated in the work, the work session, you know, the building, whatever buildings would still have to be approved. So. And we're below the FAA rec recommended, so I'm not comfortable with it. I just want to say I recognize uh, I recognize your concern, and for the record, I so appreciate that because you're doing what you're supposed to be doing is <coughs> putting the airport first. Yeah. So, just want that. Uh, just want you to recognize that. Um, everybody's good. Yeah. All right, Kathleen. Mary Murray. Aye. McCampbell. Aye. Brinker. Aye. Wilson? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Here I have a motion for preliminary adoption of the second reading of an ordinance amending various sections of Chapter 97, Industrial Pre-Treatment Requirements of the City of Burlington Municipal Code. I need a second. Second, please. Second. Well, listening to Eric, I'm going to say there's no changes since last time. Um, the ordinance, uh, the proposed uh, amended ordinance uh, pertains to our industrial pretreatment program and it basically was amended uh, for two reasons. One is to, uh, to incorporate into the ordinance the new local limits uh, which uh, govern or establish the maximum amount of uh, various pollutants that can be in the wastewater entering the plant. Uh, the reason we have those limits is to protect the uh, processes at the wastewater treatment plant and uh, protect the environment from possible pass-through. Uh, at our facility, the processes generate solids that are actually land applied on farmers' fields. And so that's also taken into consideration is you can have pass through a facility, you can have a toxic or shock effect on the, on the processes, uh, you can have the material collect in your biological process and end up being put back on farmer's fields. And so um, the local limits that are currently in the ordinance had not been changed since uh, the early 80s. Uh, the plant has gone through a couple of upgrades. Most recent one was done in uh, 2010 to 2012, and that triggered the need for us to uh, do a reevaluation of what the processes could actually handle. Uh, we went from an anaerobic, I mean, I'm sorry, an aerobic digester to an anaerobic digester, and the anaerobic digester is more sensitive to some of the pollutants that were uh, limited um, earlier. and. Uh, about um, twice as many of the pollutants were tweaked downward to protect the processes and the environment while um, half of those actually went up and we actually created more space by going from aerobic to anaerobic. Um, the, uh, there is a trickle down effect on those limits in that uh, we also um, carry out the industrial pretreatment program. We have several industries in our community that are regulated by us through a wastewater discharge permit, which establishes qual water quality for their discharge to the sewer system to protect the system and the integrity of the process. And uh, as a result of these changes to the local limits, virtually all the limits that they have within their permit have been tweaked downward. Now they've been notified of these changes and given the opportunity to reply to us or to reply to city council, they were made aware of these dates. And uh, to my knowledge, there's been no contact to us at the wastewater plant with regards to the proposed changes. I don't know, I, I assume they haven't contacted anybody uh, at council level. 
How, the, long, how long have they, how long have the, the businesses it's going to affect, how long have they had information on this? Uh, we sent the first letter a year ago mm. to let them know that this was coming up. We were in the process of doing the evaluation at the time. It had to go to the state for review and uh, approval before we brought it to you. So they've been aware of it since a year ago, and then we, re we sent another letter, basically the same thing, reiterating the fact that they were going to be changed, it was going to be changing uh, as we go through this process or as a result of this process. The other, uh, the other proposed uh, changes are simply language changes that were initiated by U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, uh, ensuring that we have language within our ordinance which allows us to put the language in the wastewater discharge permits we have with the industries, which enables us to uh, have uh, control authority type uh, powers to regulate what they're discharging. And if there's an issue, we can approach them and work with them. Or ultimately, if we had to, we could actually find the industries for noncompliance. Okay. Sounds good. Questions or concerns from the audience? I see none. Council? Here I have a motion to amend the motion for preliminary adoption of the second reading of an ordinance amending various sections of Chapter 97, <coughs> Industrial Pretreatment Requirements of the City of Burlington Municipal Code to read as follows. For waiver of preliminary consideration and adoption of the second reading and for final adoption of an ordinance amending various sections of Chapter 97, Industrial Pretreatment Requirements of the City of Burlington Municipal Code. Second. Moved and second. Kathleen, let's vote on the amendment. Graham Murray? Aye. McCambo? Aye. Rinker? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Okay, now let's vote as amended. Graham Murray? Aye. McCambo? Aye. Rinker? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Phillips? Aye. All right, resolution number one. I have a resolution awarding contract for the 2018 Depot White Boxing. Mr. McGregor. I need a second. Second. Good evening. Um, in front of you is a resolution uh, to award bid to SMG Construction in the amount of $172,063. Um, we received bids last Monday uh, at 2 o'clock. Uh, the estimate uh, was significantly lower um, than what the bid amount was. There were some significant changes uh, from the estimate that you saw back in July. Um, there was uh, an addition of a mechanical system for uh, HVAC uh, added to it um, that, that caused the increase of the price. Um, we have uh, $163.811 160, remaining um, from the 180, which is composed of 120,000 originally, uh, where 15,000 uh, was spent down for a sewer lateral, and then 75,000 from a Main Street Challenge grant. Uh, that totaled 195, um, and then the, the sanitary lateral was taken out, and then we have engineering fees reduced out of that. That was 17,000, um, so we have 163 remaining. So there's a difference, a negative balance uh, from the award amount of 172 to the the available amount of funds that we have allotted for this project at 163. Um, based on that, that's the reason why my recommendation was to not award bid because we had. Um, such finite resources dedicated to this project. I guess what I'm here to talk about is, is options on how to potentially fund the remaining balance of the difference to, to walk into that with a little bit of contingency. Um, I would refer to Jim for some assistance on that conversation. Um, I feel like we probably could go back to the Economic Development Advisory Committee and ask for, for some more funds to try and complete this project. Um, there's, there's other grant opportunities out there, but I don't know the timing of those. If you want to look at that, uh, you could award bid at the amount and then try and dial back some of the work. When you do that uh, type of function, you will not get a full completed white, broad, white box project um, that will have some things remaining that you'll ultimately have to probably end up doing. Um, my hope when we saw the bid was to remove the great room floors, even though that would have been a big benefit to the building. It would have been something that we could have still completed the project with. Unfortunately, that was not in the spec. Um, and that was about a $30,000 funding gap that I saw that maybe we could award bid and still have the, the ability to do all of that. So I guess with that, I'm going to turn it over to you because I don't really 
know the direction that you want to head in um, on, on what kind of conversation you want to have. Real quick, the flooring, which we talked about last week, which we thought was in the Correct. Bid, wasn't actually in the bid? It was not in the spec. So if we did the flooring, it'd be an additional 30000 above and beyond where Correct. we are right now? And, and with and I didn't I put it in my memo, but I didn't talk about it. The walking into some sort of a renovation like this, interior renovation, especially in a building that's you know built in the 1940s, I would recommend a 20% contingency. And so I put that in the memo. That would take the total of a recommended dollar figure up to 206. And so if you were to add on the the flooring, it would be an extra 30. I don't know what the dollar figure, but it's 650 a square foot and. 4,000 square foot. So. You also have an alternate to finish off those windows on the Correct. Um, and I thought, you know, when I first looked at it, I thought that was a real option on doing the windows. Um, the alternate number one was a full window replacement similarly to that was done in the great room. Um, put a new frame and new windows. The, what was spec'd out was just replacing the bottom window panes and repairing some of the framework, um, leaving the top glass. It and we don't have the framework of the lease put together or an agreement. We do not. So I, that is another option, I guess, if the potential tenant would cover some of the costs of the additional, of that, that gap between the, the awarded amount and then what we have allotted um, and then some sort of a reduced le uh, lease setup. We set have a up. framework for a lease. Oh, we do. Okay. Yeah, we, oh, we, we misunderstood. We provided that. Okay. I thought you meant, I, I, I assumed you a, intended a, a, a signed lease. Last so. year in July, I think. And, okay. All right. and it's been I, something I that he hasn't really moved week. forward to pers to talk to go into any negotiation on. Okay. One of the things that we talked about was, if, I think that was about a nine dollars a square foot. It's been a, a year since I've looked at that on the lease. on a, uh, a lease dollar figure yeah. per square foot. It's something like nine dollars a square foot. We were looking at. We'd asked, kind of gotten an idea what market rate was uh, for comparable spaces. What would be a recommended rate? Um, we'd thought about the idea of taking a look at having that as a as a base of negotiation. If there, if you said there was a shortfall, for example, in here, uh, thirty thousand, how do you do a revised, yeah. reduced rent to to reflect that they're they're covering a, cor a portion of those costs? Uh, those discussions haven't. We've never been able to get anywhere with with Matt on that. It's really not something that he's had an interest in, in talking about. We also didn't have finalized numbers on what that dollar figure really meant. Um, you know, are, are you talking 10 or 15,000 or are you talking yeah. 50? Right. <clears throat> so what is your suggestion as far as coming up with the contingent now that we can't remove the floors? Well, it depends. On, some of this depends on what your, what your priorities are as a group. Uh, if you're trying to get a something that is completely white box and you do have it, have a completed pro product for what you're after, are the, you would have one discussion. Uh, if you're willing to have only a partial white boxing occur, uh, you could theoretically reduce some items from this. Correct. I mean, you could choose to not do the, there's a drop ceiling in there, so you could have the HVAC and the sprinkler system hidden from the ceiling. Um, so if you were to reduce that, which is it isn't a large dollar figure cost, you would have exposed utilities above, and you know simply paint uh, the ceiling. Uh, you could elect to not install one of the utilities itself. Um, I don't know which one makes the most sense. I, I feel like they're all kind of necessary. Maybe the heating he, heating and cooling system you could get away with because there is heating and cooling for the great room and the, and they are adjoined. And so once you have the new doors in and you have it more airtight, that could heat and cool that cell for, for at least a while and at least have it so that, you know, if there's a future tenant that, that maybe you put that in at that time. I, See, I, a lot of this is utility work, and a lot of it's needed when you before you have anybody really move it in. So it's I, it's really difficult to pare back anything on this. Is you know there's there's nothing that's extravagant on this type of project. I mean, from a design standpoint, having the HVAC and the sprinkler system exposed from a ceiling standpoint, I don't see that as being a significant problem. A lot of commercial construction today has that built out that way. So what's what's the number look like? 
that would have to be an award. That would be a conversation after you talk with when you know award S and G and then talk with them. But this it's not significant. I mean, it's not eight grand. And, and this was a lump sum bid. It wasn't set up with quantities, so you yep. can't. Pull and up so you could like rebid it potentially. You'd have to change something in the scope for that to make sense, and then you could do line item type functions. In all honesty, I wish we had done that. Looking back, hindsight's 2020. I wish we would have done it line item by line item. I didn't also expect the mechanical system to, to run us that high, but you know we had four bids on it. So if there was one bid on it, maybe you say, well, there's there's only one bidder. They're all busy, but there I mean there was four bids on that project. I mean I think we're committed to that that structure. We we already taken the steps uh, to move forward with it with. Um, uh, running the new sewer main. We, we spent money doing that. We're committed to that specific space. Um, obviously, we cut out the floors. It wasn't something that was in the spec, so there's no point in talking about it now. But um, I'm okay with. with uh, I think I'd be okay with awarding contract. Would it make sense to Jim to say any overruns could come out of? I mean, we obviously, talk to economic development. See if there's any funding there, but where, where else? If you're James. If you're going to ask for a recommendation from them, you have to give them the time to actually consider it before you award before bid, and then say that you're yeah. going to do it based off of that. Okay. It's potentially eighty-four thousand dollars difference. At this point in time, I'd say we'd have to. My opinion is we have to hit the brakes. Eighty-four thousand. Yeah, if you did the floor, no, 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 no. If, if, if it's 163, 162, uh, it's what we have available, and it goes, the contingency is 206, and if you're going to do it, you do the floors, that takes it up another 30,000. That's Floors, floors wasn't in the specs. I mean, the floors well, is a separate I understand that, but eventually you're going to have to do that. I would rather see us if we could find some more grant money to assist us with that, if, if there's anything like that that comes up. I think the one thing to, I, I don't know what the timetable is, Steve's here, but the we have a $75,000 Main Street Challenge yes. grant, and I don't know what the time length on that project oh, is. Right. So if you were to choose to not elect to award, I don't know what the duration is before you would have to have some sort of a, a plan moving forward. If you could delay it for a couple months, look for some other opportunities, whatever that may be, I don't know what that duration is. And what were the stipulations on us receiving that seventy five grand too? That so, Steve Freever, Downtown Partners. I did check with uh, Main Street Iowa today. Uh, because they view the white boxing of the diner as the primary purpose of this grant, they're not as concerned with seeing the rest of the waiting room floors done. I think that'd be their preference, that'd be my preference. Um, uh, $75,000, uh, that project needs to be uh, completed by next November, November of 19. And this project, if we award today, it's going to take six months, right? Give or take, depending on depending on what you run into, I'd say four or five months. When I mean, you have a lot smaller space than you had with the great room, that also means you have contractors potentially working on top of each other. Um, Jim, do we have a little bit of depending on what happens with parking down here now? If that's going to scale back, was there a little bit of a buffer in there? As we've talked about, we can spend that about four or five times over. Right, absolutely. Um, so there's 700000 from the manor sale that we've put aside in a capital account. Uh, cost estimate that your guys came up with was parking. for parking w with engineering fees. They, I mean, in, in, subject to going out to bid, but these are based off of the bids that we did this summer on parking lots, about 500000 Yeah, it was 470 with the engineering added on. Uh, I think that I, I really do recommend that you put a hundred thousand into solid waste, and I, I think that we need to bring forward a probably a resolution that tran that's authorizing a transfer over to cover. And I'm all in on that. <clears throat> um, so you have about a hundred thousand that you could use on something like this. Um, I wouldn't want to say that you want to commit all the money because one for one you haven't bid out that parking lot. You don't know what that is. You haven't decided that that's ultimately exactly what you want to do. Um, I mean, you need 25000 to cover the contingency, right? You need a little bit more. You need 40000 And 43. You could set aside that much, but just know that if 
I mean, we haven't gotten the authorization from the railroad yet. Mm -hmm. If you have a purchase price on that land as opposed to a land swap, I don't have the cash to now to say that we can really do a, an outright cash purchase without where you, I mean, you're, you're just going to have to pull it from somewhere else. But what if we were leaning toward a land swap, though? Then it, you can make it work, and I think you could use this. But then you've really committed to that funding. You, you're done with options well. for what you do. And the, one of the things that is still sitting out there that I know is uh, something that we've had some discussions about, and we'll come up in the next, maybe this next work session. Uh, Alley. Uh, oh yeah. Doing well, doing oh, something alter utility. alternate with the with the utilities. Oh, right, right. Um, you had a request to to underground those. Well, Alliant talked about that. That's a. If if we ask them to do that, that's a five hundred thousand plus project. That somebody has to cover. They're not paying for it. They don't want to be partners like I thought they did. <laughs> now they will look at something if we were to come up with a. If we paved alleys, they would underground as part of it, and they wouldn't charge us for the undergrounding. So well, that's a large part of their cost is replacing that, the paving. That's a completely so, different conversation. So, to too, well, but, but if you're looking at then that alley um, deal, if that's a uh, maybe three hundred thousand just to go in and, and concrete those, and then that's just throwing a number out there, but give or give or take <clears throat> fifty hundred thousand. Nick, do we have the ability to scale? We, Back. Again, that's you. You got to know that to come up with a match on something like that. I don't know how you you would do that, and that would be the other thing that sits out there that you're saying that this is kind of competing with, and your public needs to understand that you're talking about some relatively fixed dollars that we have available to talk about some of these different things, and you're making some priority cho choices. I am comfortable putting that money towards this because you committed to this project a year and a half ago. But you got to know that you're making a choice that, that's that much less that you can talk about for what is another important project. Gotcha. I mean, as far as I'm concerned with regard to the utility stuff, with the information I have at this point, there's a lot of other things in our community <coughs> that we need to do before we make that a priority. So I'm, we've already started with this building. I say let's get finished with this building. Um, if we, I, I would like to see us award the bid, request to, uh, I mean, try to cut the cost as much as we can, starting with that ceiling project. And yeah, I mean, you're not talking a whole lot of dollars I know, on I know, that. I know. The, the biggest, the, actually, there's a bigger portion of, in that in the bid, there was a part for a building permit, so that's eighteen hundred dollars. Uh, that was an easy talk down. Why we're not going to charge ourselves for a building <laughs> permit? So, um, I would stay away from trying to cut debt back on, off this route. I think the ceiling is necessary. I really do. I mean, you, you could cut it back to just get it done, but sure. I, think it would, I think it would look wonky. Let's, let's be clear like on your recommendation, Nick. Uh, go ahead and let, let's give us, uh, give us your straight up recommendation. I think it. if you're going to award bid, you, you do the full work that was spec'd out. What about the alternate? With the, the floor? No. That's the, an extra. The well, windows. Oh. There's costs in there for window replacement, um, and that could be backed out and then replaced with the 18000 and I don't know what those dollar figures are. I think it makes a lot of sense to replace those windows with full f new frame and windows. Uh, from an owner's standpoint, I mean, just those, some of those frames are yeah, they're pushing you know, 60 years old, and there's some rot in there, and I feel like you could be getting into a position if you start, because you can cut some of it out and you can, you can put it back. Um, there's a special epoxy that you can put in there, but if you were to, if you were to award, I, I would like to do the alternate, but I don't know how I can stand here knowing that we're underfunded anyway and make that kind of a recommendation. So, I mean, if you're going to do it though, if you're going to fund the project, it would be nice to do the alternate number one. But windows, I mean, you talked about not doing the HVAC. To me, if I'm a business owner and now we're going to change out the HVAC, that's a bigger project and a more intrusive project than replacing some windows. So if we decided a couple of years from now, whether we got another grant or we decide we're going to do the windows with the floor, we could do that and it would be minimally invasive five years from now. Council. Well, I have I do have a question uh, because we've and I want this project 
to, to succeed. I want the whole depot to succeed. I was involved with it uh, a long time ago and, and been a fan of, of what the work the friends have done. My biggest question is, and I guess I've, I've kind of lost this in the with all our other stuff going on, is will it flood? If we get a 08 93 flood it's, because it's no undetermined burn. because yeah there's no the nsf did it. raise their tracks but that yeah. doesn't mean that you couldn't have seepage up in there um i wasn't here to know how much water was in there but i heard it was 16 inches it was less than that that was a 93 right that was when the oh, tracks were we made. we fully built out um with hescos we'd be pushing having enough to go across the front. It's all in timing too, sure. you know. I mean, if we have enough time walking into it, we could we could potentially sandbag around that. So they they, they, they raised the tracks like dangerous. 14 inches, but Correct. But then but at one point in time we were talking about a berm around it. That's why I was asking because mm -hmm. there's no berm but even, even though they have raised the yeah, tracks. Yeah. That's in the plan. Yeah. To protect that. That's not there yet. It won't be for a while either. Okay. Council. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll with you on this, Nick, and uh, um, except for you're, you're the, the, the no. one of the things is you you do have a little time to make a decision on something like this. You could suspend awarding bid until the following meeting to one work out and have a conversation on. If the funding source is coming from where, and then I could also have a conversation with S and G on one what the alternative bid looks like, and if there's any way to back it out. But you really can't. You're not. You shouldn't have those conversations until you award bid, and that's typically not done by backing things out like that. But sure. well, your down. your recommendation is to not award it without a funding source on this. Right. I don't. I don't know how so I. So that do. would be. Is there a Mr. Depot, I mean, Mr. Trayman. Yeah, Don <laughs> Trayman, 116 Greenbrier. <clears throat> I've been with this thing since way back when we started in uh, 2011, I believe. Uh, I appreciate that you fellows are, and gals are taking this seriously. Um, Ms. Wilson, I think you remember about three years back, your Economic Development Committee uh, offered and recommended, uh, what, over 150000 if you recall, and it was dropped back by council to 120. Mm, yes. So uh, at one time, the council that was here was willing to invest more, than, part of the council, more than uh, been done. Uh, flood, uh, Mr. Billups, you're, you are correct. Um, the proposal that was set up at that time for a berm and Hesco's was superseded by the riverfront. Um, verbally, it was promised that that building would be taken care of. Uh, I know and you know that things change, but uh, uh, I'm sure that Hesco's can be put around that. Whether that will take care of all underneath Nobody knows. No one knows. Okay. So uh, appreciate your taking this seriously. You've got over a million dollars invested in that building in the last three years. I don't want to see you stop now. Thank you, Mr. Treeman. Can, can, uh, Nick, can you come back up here and uh, reiterate to us what do we have to do to make sure we don't lose the Main Street Challenge grant? Do we have to act now? Well, we can suspend the... Yeah, there's there's nothing that a two-week so, period of time is going to halt any sort of grant dollars. You said right. December or November in 2019, so you have a full year to complete this construction project. I mean, so, at, okay. the, at the craziest, you could, you could wait till the HRDP grant comes due April 30th and go after that. I mean, that's a six-month window of time, but, I mean, it's still yeah, a conversation. I, I don't remember what we went after last time with that. It was a it was a pretty good chunk though. I mean, I think it was, I, I 
think it might be difficult to, to make a sales pitch to the State Historical Site for an HRDP grant for just a small sliver of completing this project. Well, and I don't know if this is the correct procedure, but the, the thing you said that would intrigue me, Nick, would be uh, to table it or to hold it and, and then give staff time to work out so we could look at, give uh, time to look out, okay, where's that funding come and where's that impact us elsewhere? Because there's a lot of moving parts going on with the downtown right now uh, with, the, with the parking lot and stuff. And it, it sounds to me like there's some money there, but I, I know by the same token, there's, there's some concerns that Jim has had, and I, I'd, like to, I'd like to fully look at that rather than saying yes or no because I wasn't aware of the short call I, or shortfall. I'd, I'd rather... Uh, see what our options are in depth rather than a 15-minute conversation. Oh, that's nice, Hightower. That'll be a fine. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if we can do that Is there a direction for, from funding, I, you know, I, a, a specific path? I mean, because there's right? like five or six that we laid out. <laughs> I, mean, I know. I just, I just um, want to... I, I, I agree with John. I think it would be smart for us to postpone this until the next council meeting and then explore the possibility of trying to pull that funding out of that. What would you say, Jay? I said I think you have two, two sources of funds. Either you're pulling it out of your, the, what you put aside the in capital, the 700000 or you're taking it out of the economic development. Make a request one from there and move to down, down that route, or use the other one. See, I mean, those are two very viable. Right. Okay. So could we um, postpone, put another request from, to the Economic Development Board while looking at the other grant options? I think your other grant option really isn't that Your viable. bids are only viable for 30 days, I believe. I would say let's just postpone this to the next meeting and then reach out to Economic Development. Your meeting isn't until October, but you'd have to have a is it sooner than that? I thought it was October. I it was October. Maybe it is next week. Perfect. That would be nice. Yeah, <laughs> that would be nice. Uh, James, did you? Uh, what was your What was your final uh, uh, input on that? No, just just so you have a a, a path identified for how you it want to cover. It is September. Okay, so do we want to uh, wait till after Stephanie works some magic and Nick uh, Nick works a little magic too? Is that what we want to do then? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You're, not exactly. looking, you're not looking very magic. Well, I don't know right what magic because I'm supposed to work. Oh, oh, it's not I. Magic. I feel like there has been a lot of conversation on stuff, but I don't know what exact right. path. I what should do we want Nick I'd, to do? I'd like to see Mick. Or Mick. <laughs> I'd like to see. It's been a long day. I'd like to see you. Um, I'm, I think at this point we're having trouble getting to that number with even with the contingencies. Let's the contingencies is always something we can do down the road. Whether we do it with the floors, um, uh, I'd like to see us get to that number so that we can get the basic white box done as it is right now um, later on once we've got a tenant and we know what that building is looking like especially from a revenue standpoint then we can have a better idea as to what what additionally we're going to put into it um, it also might give us an opportunity to go after different grants down the road and tie the windows and the flooring together uh, and do those projects separately so that's where I'm at so you do you want him to do a more itemized bid in a sense no I'm, no I'm just, just fine with the bid you've got now we just won't do the the additional window okay project. so we don't need nick to do, do anything yeah that's right that's, that's what i'd like to see so i'm just trying i'm just trying to give it. nick an answer do what do we so, want him to do know, nothing okay to <laughs> yeah. All right. does somebody else need anything from nick or i don't i think I, I think i know where i'm at i i withdraw my suggestion to postpone it so oh that wasn't a motion. That was just a suggestion. I know. Yeah. Oh. I, you know, thinking about it, and here's where I'm just sitting, thinking about it. We have a million dollars invested in the building. Yeah. We have a possible tenant, and that could be a catalyst for the other half of the building getting done. Jim said there's two different sources. We trust our staff to, to figure out which is the best way to fund it, and we, that's, you know, I'm, I know I sound like I'm back and forth, but at this point in time, I'm, I'm saying let's do it. Well, but we don't want to. We don't want to vote on it tonight until we know whether or not the money is coming from economic development or that, coming from. That, so we are technically James. postponing it for until the next meeting. 
that's up to you. But uh, I mean, if you could say that you would make a request for economic development funds and, and fully realizing that if you're ultimately deciding not to use that, that you would use the other source the other of funds reason. to do right. it. So I would, okay I would, that. I would like to make a motion to postpone awarding contract for the 2018 depot white boxing to September 17th. Is that correct? Uh, pending the decision of funding source from the two options. I, is that necessary? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Can I get a second? Second. Kathleen, let's do it. Graham Murray. Abstain. McCampbell. Aye. Brinker. Aye. Wilson. Aye. Phillips. Aye. Okay. And I and I did speak with SG Construction uh, last week to tell them what my recommendation was, told them the funding issue that we have, and that I would recommend not awarding bid. That we would work to have a conversation on that. So they knew that walking in. Okay. 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 Thanks, Nick. Sorry. We'll give me a couple of different directions there. Boy, that took a while. All right. It brings us to resolution number two. I have a resolution acknowledging West Burlington's termination of allowing the City of Burlington's ambulance to be stationed at the West Burlington Fire Department during the day. All right. First off, I'll apologize. Second. second. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I'm yelling at you. Second. I don't like hearing a second on that. Okay, Chief. Okay. So first of all, I'd like to apologize to anybody that I might have said tonight would be a short meeting. I may, <laughs> I may have said that to somebody behind me I so I may have said that too so yeah. sorry about that to, to keep myself on track here and to make sure you get all the information I'm basically going to read a prepared statement and then when I'm done I'll take any questions that you have <clears throat> so before I talk about the content of Mayor Trousel's memo I think it is important that I share some background information about the ambulance being in West Burlington and the benefits we have seen as a result Going back to at least Fire Chief Bill L., there has been a realization that the Burlington Fire Department was underserving a significant portion of our community, specifically the western region, including the Roosevelt Avenue corridor and the Lenox Park area. We cannot respond to those areas within the recognized, recognized standards for EMS or fire. Chief L. had suggested building a fire station along Roosevelt Avenue. One of the ways we tried to address this early on after I became the chief was through the use of automatic aid uh, for structure fires with the West Burlington Fire Department. And on paper, it seems to address the fire response issue, namely the response time issue. But in actuality, it hasn't improved the response times. And it did nothing to address our EMS issues. To compound the response time issue was the increasing number of ambulance calls to all areas. Staffing a third ambulance became a frequent suggestion from our crews and it made perfect sense. Where to place and how to staff a third ambulance was not so easy to figure out. In late 2015, I asked Fire Chief Sean Ryan, West Burlington Fire Chief, about the possibility of staffing a third ambulance in the West Burlington Fire Station when we had the staffing available. He discussed it with Mayor Trousel and he was on board. Now we had a place, but rarely did we have the staffing uh, to, to staff the third ambulance. With the addition of six personnel with the SAFER grant, we have been able to staff an ambulance crew in the West Burlington Station from 8 a.m. until at least 5 p.m. almost every day since November 1st, 2017. At night, the crew transitioned to the Burlington Public Works facility as there have not been any overnight accommodations made in West Burlington. Uh, Public Works Director Nick McGregor and the Public Works employees in general have been very accommodating to us out there in the evening. They have opened up some office space for us to use as well as giving us probably the best parking space in the building. I also want to thank the Burlington City Council for allowing us to staff an ambulance outside of our city limits. I know there's been some question regarding putting our, the city's paid staff in another community, even though it benef benefits the citizens of Burlington. I personally have always felt that fire stations, whether in West Burlington or Burlington, belong to the public and not to the members of the fire department. It seems like a waste of taxpayer money to consider buying a new, building a new fire station within blocks of an existing one. We knew from the start that this would not be an easy ende endeavor, but we have committed to making it work because this is what is best for our community. 
there are plenty of examples out there where career and volunteer fire firefighters occupying the same space has created some issues. But there are also plenty of examples where it has worked out. This is a great opportunity to form a partnership, one in which each entity is looking out for the citizens, not their own interests. This has been my stance since day one, and our firefighters have embraced it. Our firefighters have constantly worked through any issues that were uh, brought to our attention to make this work, even when they had to make some sort of personal sacrifice. <clears throat> this ambulance has quickly become our second busiest ambulance. It has benefited the citizens and visitors of Burlington and West Burlington, as well as those in every other area that we serve. So let me just start with the response times. Uh, if you're a worker, say at Shears Foods at 3000 Mount Pleasant Street in Burlington, where we have had 19 calls over the last year and you get injured or have a medical emergency, you're gonna want us to be responding from the West Burlington Fire Station. From there, we would arrive in less than three minutes versus seven minutes from Central Station, or worse, 12 minutes if we had to respond from Station 2. If you live on Northern Drive in Burlington, we can arrive at your medical emergency in less than five minutes if responding from West Burlington. It will take eight minutes if we respond from Central Fire Station. Those living in assisted living or nursing homes in Burlington on West Avenue are seeing a much quicker response as well. Sunnybrook Assisted Living, which accounts for 90 calls per year, has seen response times drop from between 8 and 11 minutes to 6 minutes for responses made from the West Burlington Fire Station. Burlington Fire Department's average response time in the community of West Burlington in July was 5 minutes and 5 seconds, which was actually better than our average response time here in Burlington, which was 5 minutes and 17 seconds. If you live at 507 Vernon Street in West Burlington, we can arrive at your emergency in less than three minutes if we're responding from West Burlington. If we have to respond from Central Fire Station, it takes eight minutes. We had 34 responses to this address over the last year. If you live at 701 East Pennington in West Burlington and we are at the West Burlington Station, we can arrive at your emergency in less than three minutes. If we have to respond from Central Fire Station, it will be seven minutes or more. We had 31 calls to this address over the last year. If your emergency is at the West Burlington High School and we are stationed in West Burlington, we can be at your side in less than two minutes. If we respond from Central Fire Station, it will be seven or eight minutes. And keep in mind all of these, uh, all the West Burlington response times do not account for the current state of construction in our communities. Imagine getting from Central Fire Station to anywhere in West Burlington today all the major routes or all the routes have major road construction going on. These same response issues continue out into our other response areas, especially Flint River Township, Middletown, Danville, and Pleasant Grove. Just tack on an extra five minutes from Central Fire Station or up to 10 minutes if responding from Station 2. And while some might think five minutes is no big deal, it can be the difference between life and death brain damage or no brain damage, disability or no disability. Our patient's quality of life can be drastically altered in the difference between a two minute response time and a seven minute response time. In addition to the EMS benefit, the ambulance running out of West Burlington has provided benefits on other calls, including the recent grain bin rescue call and various calls, fire calls in and around West Burlington. They have been able to stage for West Burlington football games or be present for other activities in and around West Burlington. Having the third ambulance staff 24-7 has allowed us to stop shutting down an engine company every time we have three ambulances on calls. Currently, hardly a day goes by where we don't have three ambulances out at one time on calls. Uh, previously, this would require us shutting down an engine company each time that happened. This ambulance has also decreased the number of times that we've had to respond to an ambulance from outside of its assigned territory. So we definitely have the call volume and the territory to justify the need for the third ambulance. I have to say that Mayor Trousel's memo caught me somewhat off guard as Deputy Chief Ryan and I had visited West Burlington officials on Monday and Tuesday of last week. On Monday, we met with Fire Chief Sean Ryan to discuss the placement of video and audio recording devices throughout the West Burlington Fire Station. 
<clears throat> the conversation was pleasant and no issues were brought up. On Tuesday, Deputy Chief Ryan and I visited City Administrator Dan Gifford, again in reference to the cameras, as Fire Chief Ryan had said they were placed at the insistence of the City Administrator. Our conversation with City Administrator Gifford went very well. He understood our concerns and said he would work with Fire Chief Sean Ryan to provide a place free of recording devices to complete confidential patient care reports. <clears throat> Neither Fire Chief Sean Ryan nor City Administrator Dan Gifford gave any indication that things were amiss or that we would soon be removed from the West Burlington Fire Station. So you can imagine my surprise when I received this email. So I'm going to go ahead and read this memo for Mayor Trousel. It's addressed to Mr. Jim Furneaux and Burlington Fire Chief Matt Trexel. Gentlemen, this letter is to inform you that effective September 1st, 2018, the West Burlington Fire Station will no longer be, be able to provide the vehicle, a vehicle bay for the use of a city county ambulance vehicle. The city of West Burlington Fire Department during the last 10 months has made accommodations to provide a bay for the ambulance without having a formal contract between the entities of the city of Burlington and West Burlington. As mayor, I have allowed an ambulance to be stationed there under the pretense of being told this would be a temporary basis and during winter months, winter weather months. These circumstances have changed to where at times a vehicle is stationed there from the hours of 8 a.m. until 10 p.m. daily. This was not approved by the mayor or contractually between the two entities. After further observations on August 28th by the mayor, by the mayor, the ambulance being stored and used to respond to incidents has a severe oil leak that is ruining the concrete floor. The West Burlington Fire Department has equipment and vehicles sitting in positions that are detrimental to adequately respond to incidents due to not being able to use the vehicle bay occupied at present by the ambulance. Questions have arisen over the installations of security cameras throughout the building. It is the City of West Burlington's responsibility to protect our property and employees from undue harassment and allegations made by anyone, including our employees. We, specifically I, will not tolerate harassment by anyone, whether an employee of West Burlington or someone that we allowed to be our guests. Sincerely, Hans Trousel, Mayor, City of West Burlington. <clears throat> so after reading that, it's kind of hard to know how to respond. There are bits of truth that are embellished with exaggerations, outright fabrication, and it ends with an unwarranted accusation. However, even if all that information in the memo were true, it still would not justify shutting down a life-saving service. The first point he makes is that it was agreed to house the ambulance only in the winter months. To my knowledge, no one has ever talked about this being a winter months only deal. The West Burlington Fire Chief and I have discussed it several times. It was discussed at the CTAA meetings with Mayor Trousel in attendance, and never once was anything ever said about housing the ambulance only in the winter months. Housing an ambulance only in the winter would make absolutely no sense. He then raises an objection based on not having a contract. Mayor Trousel approved of staffing an ambulance in West Burlington's fire station in November of 2015 and we staffed an ambulance in their station for the first time in January of 2016. This has been approved for nearly three years and only now is he using a lack of contract to remove the ambulance. The first I heard of needing or the desire to have a contract was two months ago. At that time, I was told by an email from Fire Chief Sean Ryan that the West Burlington City Council would be working on a contract. Mayor Trousel, the West Burlington City Council, and City Administrator Gifford all received the same email. If having a contract is that important, then let's, let's work one out. Next, Mayor Trousel states there's an extreme oil leak and that it is ruining the concrete floor. I can say there is no severe oil leak and the floor isn't ruined. The ambulance normally assigned to West Burlington is a 2001 diesel-powered ambulance with over 180,000 miles. Although the ambulance is scheduled for replacement in early 2019, it's the best that we have for now. 
It is not unusual for an ambulance of this condition to have some oil dripping. An extreme oil leak infers that there's a mechanical issue with the ambulance and that we are filling it every day with oil, neither of which is true. Fire Chief Sean Ryan and I had discussed this issue a couple months ago and it was being managed. And I assumed that was to his satisfaction as he had not mentioned it again. Deputy Chief Donnie Ryan, Firefighter Wayne Kroll, West Burlington Firefighter Gunnar Hoffer and I cleaned up the floor last Wednesday afternoon by sweeping up the oil dry, cleaning it with a citrus cleaner and rinsing the floor. I can tell you the floor is not ruined. Using words like extreme and ruining or exaggerations met, meant to elicit an unwarranted emotional response. Next, Mayor Trousel states that West Burlington's vehicles are in positions that are detrimental to an adequate response. I am unaware of any instance where this has been an issue. This is something I have never heard about until mentioned in this memo. What could be more important than getting an advanced life support ambulance out the door quickly? The vast majority of calls in West Burlington, and everywhere else for that matter, are EMS related. All of the above issues can easily be overcome and do not justify denying patients quality health care, possibly life-saving life -saving care. I would think reasonable people could figure out these issues over a cup of coffee. Before I get to the issue of alleged harassment, I need to talk briefly about the security cameras that have been installed in the West Burlington Fire Station. Having cameras record your every movement and word while in the workplace is not conducive to a positive work environment. However, the more significant issue for us is the obvious HIPAA violation. We cannot have our patient care reports viewed by cameras, nor have discussions about our patients, video and audio recorded. So the most disturbing portion of this memo is Mayor Trousel's accusation of harassment. This is, false, this is a false, baseless allegation. If there were any truth to it and it was brought to my attention, I assure you that I would handle it appropriately. Mayor Trousel first made this accusation, accusation to me a couple weeks ago. When I asked him what harassment, can you give me any names, dates, or circumstances, he, he, I had nothing to offer. Instead, he brought up the joint resignation of six members of the West Burlington Fire Department who were also members of the Burlington Fire Department. These firefighters resigned on the same day after the leadership of the West Burlington Fire Department decided that we, the Burlington Fire Department, were no longer welcome in their station. These, fix, these six firefighters were surprised by the decision and they did not agree with it. While I had nothing to do with them resigning, I do not fault them for it. This does not equate to harassment. The mayor also complained about Burlington Firefighters Local 301 pressuring members to quit the West Burlington Fire Department and for not allowing them to respond on automatic aid. The leadership of Local 301 has never pressured anyone to quit a volunteer fire department, nor have they ever threatened anyone if they didn't. The only prohibition that Local 301 has in place is that union members should not respond on mutual aid into Burlington as members of another fire department whether that be the West Burlington Fire Department or any other fire department. And I do agree with this 100%, but that has nothing to do with them being union members. These guys and gals are employees of the city of Burlington and the Burlington Fire Department. This is their full-time job. We rely on them being available to respond while off duty. If they respond with West Burlington or any other fire department and then are unavailable to respond to a callback of our firefighters, they are actually in violation of the city handbook. Uh, they are not allowed to have any other employment that interferes with their employment with the city. So personally, but personally, I do not encourage them to work or volunteer and fire an EMS during their off time from the Burlington Fire Department. Fire and EMS are high stress jobs. I feel it is more important for them to use their time off to recover. <clears throat> As far as I'm concerned, there's absolutely no validity to the complaint of harassment. There's been zero evidence, names, dates, or circumstances. And I find it hard to believe and understand how a public official could make such a claim publicly without offering any proof. We have worked very hard over the last five to six years 
to build a solid relationship with the West Burlington Fire Department. 18 of our current firefighters were once members of the West Burlington Fire Department, and many more were on other volunteer departments in the area. We have worked together on hundreds, if not thousands, of calls. Almost daily, we are on the same calls. Providing ambulance service from within the city limits of West Burlington was an opportunity not embraced by some in West Burlington to the detriment of their community and ours. <laughs> I have been extremely proud and pleased with our firefighters and paramedics working in a sometimes challenging environment, but doing so because it is what is best for our patients and our citizens. Receiving this memo from Mayor Trousel was not only disheartening, but to have the mayor of West Burlington attempt, attempt to publicly tarnish the reputation of the Burlington Fire Department is a despicable action. I wholeheartedly disagree with and condemn his memo. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Do you guys have any questions for Chief? Let me, let me set that off to the side for a minute. Are there any comments or concerns from the audience? About this issue or about it in general? About this issue. Okay. I see none. Council, I, I just want to say this. I really don't have much to say about it. I'm just, I'm, uh, I'm really bummed. It's, you know, since I've been on the council, it, it seems like we were, uh, we're really making some advances with our relationship between the city of Burlington and the city of West Burlington. And, uh, you know, just coming off of the Tama fire, you know, just uh, everybody coming together and working so so great together. I wish that we had this. I remember one time I was going to give an award out to a, to a fireman, and he said, no, that's it's not within our code. He says, you know, we don't like for one person to stand out. It's, it's everybody. I like that mentality, and I, I just... Uh, was hoping that I would see that ingrained in every decision made and that that would supersede uh, any personal items. I, I don't know all the details to this, and I know it's hard to get along sometimes uh, uh, with people, um, but uh, I think with the Tama Building Fire, we kind of had an uh, emergency response mentality, and um, it's a shame that we that doesn't carry over <laughs> when the emergency is over with, that we just can't continue to try to make this thing work for the betterment of Des Moines County. Yeah, I'm... I'm disappointed as well but I really appreciate your well thought out and well explained response so thank you for that it's disheartening I know when I read the memo my chin fell and I had to <laughs> jut it back up it's 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 sad that we all can't get along for the betterment of our community and, and our people I'll echo that and say that um, <clears throat> at the end of the day uh, the people that will suffer from this will be the patients that need care um, and it's extremely disheartening. I will also say that I've spent a lot of time with both the police department and the fire department um, and as a councilman I can't be prouder uh, of the two departments that we have. Um, I, the, the time that I spent with you guys you've been extremely professional um, and I, I was flabbergasted at the, at the accusations in the memo so um, like I said couldn't be prouder to have you guys as the fire department and you represent us well. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would I would echo all their sentiments, Chief, and I would also say that uh, you held it with a lot more class than I would have. So hats off to you <laughs> and hats off to the ladies and gentlemen in the back there. Uh, we're well represented in Burlington and we're damn proud of our of our police and fire departments and uh, you handled that better than I would have, so nice job there. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you, Chief. Thanks. Thank you. Kathleen? Mayor Murray? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Baker? Aye. Wilson? Aye. Phillips? A regrettable aye. Okay. Uh, now's the time that we will entertain comments from the audience. Uh, anyone have comments tonight? Yes, sir. Just so everybody's aware again, these are uh, anything that's not on the agenda, we can't have a back and forth, but this is time that you can have a comment. If you want to stick around, we all got to walk out of the building. You're more than welcome to have conversations. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Robert Morrison. I live at 1105 Hillary. 
I'm one of the 125 Siemens employees in Burlington who are losing their jobs on December 21st of this year. Merry Christmas from Siemens. I have a petition with 250 signatures I've collected over the past several days stating that Siemens should not close their Burlington Iowa factory. None of these signatures have come from our employees. They've come from outside. We feel betrayed and abandoned not only by Siemens, but our elected officials from President Trump to Governor Reynolds to our state senators on down who refuse to respond to our calls and emails. I've been told I'm kicking a dead horse. I might as well be talking to a post. I disagree. This plan is worth fighting for. These jobs are worth fighting for, and my fellow employees are certainly worth fighting for. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you. It's good to know we still have fighters in this community. God bless you. Any other comments or concerns from the audience? I see none. Mr. Tislin? Okay. Kathleen, are you good? Kathleen's good. Counselor? Yes, coming up this weekend is a South Hill uh, annual block party. This is their ninth one. Uh, so it's Saturday, September 8th. Uh, write this time down, 930 to 1 on Maple Street. So lots of fun music and T-shirts and obstacle courses and games and face painting. There you go, Shane, face painting. You know, I love that stuff. <laughs> Make sure you get your trash cards in if you haven't, unless you, like myself, want to go big. I'm going to get the 65-gallon because I do have extra trash and debris, and I'm a diehard recycler, so I recycle too. I just... Uh, have uh, kids that uh, eat a lot, so I have a lot of stuff. Um, make sure you sign up and get that library card. That's all I have. Okay. Tell your kids to eat less. It's cheaper. <laughs> Anyways, counselor. Hi. I have, I have nothing to add besides Linda covered most of it. Okay. I just want to remind everybody again, the school year started. The hours are from 8 to 4. I believe it's 8 to 4 uh, that you have to drive. Maybe it's 7 to 4, but you have it's to. Uh, 7.30 to 4. 7.30 to 4. Okay, let's meet in the middle. 4.30 <laughs> But anyways, uh, during those hours, you got to slow down. Um, you know, even if the kids all are in school. Talk everywhere. That's right. That's, that's just the way it is, and the rules haven't changed. It's like that all the time. So just be mindful again. Um, I want to say hello to my neighbor, Robin. I know she's watching, so I just want to say hello to you. God bless you, hon. And uh, oh, there was something else I was supposed to do. But I'll, uh, I'll come back to that. Counselor? Um, just get out there and enjoy all the wonderful things our downtown and the rest of the area has to offer. I don't have much else. Okay. Thank you. Counselor? No. City Manager, Nick. Assistant City Manager, Nick McGregor. As you may have noticed, um, we are down there preparing for HESCO. We've done some HESCOs today. Uh, the river level is current projected at 17.5. Uh, we're expecting it to go higher than that uh, with the rain in the forecast for the next six out of the eight days um, in the general area. Um, so we will, we, we've started a little bit today. Uh, there's some cars in the way, but we'll start some more tomorrow on the south side. So don't like to see that. Unfortunately, we also have the Hawkeye open right now. Um, so we might, if it gets higher than that, we might have to do some work around that, which is not ideal. I uh, don't know how exactly have a plan for that, but um, we shouldn't have to worry about that until it gets to 20, 20 and a half, so. Okay. City manager. Radio. Yes. Yeah, if John it was possible to, We're going to flip and have them go this week. And actually, next week I won't be here. It'll be Nick that will do it next week. Um, he next year. Next week is uh, League of I League of Cities meeting. Uh, Linda, I think you're going to yep. that. I'm going uh, to that. You're going to that too. Uh, Charlie Nichols will be presenting, I think, on Thursday, talking about uh, nuisance abatement and the healthy neighborhoods initiatives that we've done. So he'll be, I think he's a little nervous about that presentation, doing it in front of that group. And I think he might be doing a little bit of that too this next. Is he talking on the same thing at Rotary next week? I think he's, so. he's talking at Rody. I'm not sure if it's the same uh, topic or not. But, and that's, I think, all I have. Do you already I know have that everybody for the radio? I think John and Still Shane. Shane. Yeah. Um, we are painting the house. Uh, weather permitting on Thursday. I don't know how we're. My house? 
getting, <laughs> not your house, um, not my house either, and it really needs it. Weather permitting Thursday. Um, this is part of the uh, pain a thon. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to get it in that date. Otherwise, we'll have a rain date where our staff will get out and get that done. I don't so have anything else. Okay, I just want to close that with uh, I saw Eric Teslin uh, at the, uh, where was it? Pantero's? Anyways, I waved to him. He wouldn't wave back. I just want that documented on TV. And then the other thing, I just want to recognize uh, past Mayor Tim Scott is in the house tonight. Good to see you're still involved, even though you're still not sitting behind the bench. Always good to see you. There's nothing else? No. Can I get a motion to, to wrap it up, please? Motion I'm close. A second. second. Moved and second twice. Kathleen. Graham Murray. Aye. McCampbell. Aye. Rinker. Aye. Wilson. Aye. Phillips. Aye. Thank you for your cooperation. Cooperation. <laughs> cooperation. Learn how to talk. Good night, everybody. Oh. So.